Today I want to talk to you about trichomoniasis. Let's define it. Trichomonas vaginalis is a single-celled, flagellated, anaerobic protozoa. It causes direct damage to the epithelium, leading to micro ulcerations, most commonly in the vagina, urethra, and the parourethral glands. In the United States, an estimated 3.7 million people have trichomoniasis, with many of the infected persons sharing similar risk factors, including recent or current incarceration, intravenous drug use, and co-infection with bacterial vaginosis. Trichomonal infections do not have to be reported. Therefore, it is difficult to determine its true prevalence. Let's talk about the history in taking the history from the patient. In taking the history, you must ask about the five P's. Number one, how many sex partners do you have? Number two, what is your sexual practice, whether vagina, anal, or oral? Number three, do you have any pregnancy prevention methods? Number four, do you use any protection from STDs? And number five, have you ever had an STD? Following the five P's questions, all patients should be asked, is there anything else about your sexual practices that I need to know about? Let's move on to the physical exam. In both men and women, the history and the physical examination should be conducted in private with a chaperone. Both men and women with trichomoniasis may be asymptomatic. Physical exam might reveal purulent, fraughty vaginal discharge, vaginal odor, vulvovaginal irritation, and itching. Some women may experience dyspareunia and dysuria. The symptoms most commonly peak just after menses. Culpitis macularis, also known as strawberry cervix, can be seen by the naked eye. However, culpitis macularis and fraughty vaginal discharge together have a specificity of 99% for trichomoniasis. Individually, they have positive predictive values of 90% and 62% respectively. Men with trichomoniasis most commonly present with epididymitis, prostatitis, or urethritis. Rectal and oropharyngeal sites are also sources of chlamydia trachomatis, especially in men who have sex with men or in heterosexual ad um, adolescents who engage in unprotected anal or oral sex. Let's talk about the diagnostic testing. In the past, the most common test to evaluate trichomoniasis was microscopic evaluation of wet preparations, um, formerly referred to as wet mounts, of genital secretions. But this is no longer recommended. The nucleic acid amplification test, abbreviated NAT, NAT, is highly sensitive with a sensitivity of about 95 to 100%. And it is now the diagnostic test of choice. Antigen detecting tests are also available and are considered to be acceptable tests for the diagnosis of trichomoniasis. Although sensitivity is slightly lower than that of NAT, these tests are much more sensitive than the traditional wet mount. Let's talk about the treatment. Currently, oral metronidazole 2 grams in one oral dose or 500 milligrams orally twice a day for seven days and oral tinidazole 
2 grams in one oral dose may be used. These are the only two agents approved by the FDA for treatment of trichomoniasis. Trichomoniasis infection is also associated with adverse pregnancy outcomes, such as premature delivery or premature rupture of membranes. Unfortunately, there are no data demonstrating improvement in pregnancy outcomes following treatment. In women who are symptomatic, testing should be performed and a treatment should be initiated with metronidazole, 2 grams orally in a single dose, to relieve symptoms and reduce the likelihood of partner transmission. Due to high in reinfection rate, Discussions regarding follow-up and partner treatment are key components of the treatment of patients diagnosed with trichomoniasis. Well, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, I would like to invite you to subscribe to emergencymedicinepractice.net, whose information I have shared with you today. Good night and I wish you well.